as you'll see from these two witnessing clips as I share the gospel with a couple of very likeable homosexuals. A couple of very likeable homosexuals. To be described this way by Ray Comfort is a dream. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. We're kicking off the brand new year with a, a hell of a start. It is a man... Ray Comfort. Ray Comfort, if you are lucky enough not to be familiar with him. He's an evangelist. He is the founder of the Living Waters Church. He's particularly well known as the Banana Man for his, uh, his banana-based argument for intelligent design. You've probably heard of this. He's basically saying it's perfectly designed to fit the human hand, which made him something of a laughing stock because the evolution of bananas was artificially uh, affected by humans and so makes a ridiculous argument but he sort of took it on board and made it his thing haha <laughs> so kooky what a funny a funny fellow he and his church are therefore very anti-evolution they're very anti-science they're also very homophobic living waters church practices or at least has practiced um, conversion therapy, even here in the UK, where we're still debating whether or not to make it illegal, keeps being delayed. It's going to happen, but it's, it's delayed again. So naturally, not a fan. His whole thing, basically all it is, is he, he goes up to people and in he's really nice, friendly. I'm such a lovely guy. I could be your nice uncle that, you know, ruffles your hair at Christmas. Um, he tells you you're going to hell because of all the sin. And of course you should believe in God because it's just safer if you do because otherwise you'll burn in hell forever. And he makes people cry and then he puts that on YouTube. And I hate it. I find it deeply disturbing. I've only tackled him once on my channel before and I had help from the skeptic. It's a fun video, you should check that out. But when I saw he had a video titled, let me get the title accurate for you, Monkeypox and God, is it a gay disease? I couldn't let that go, because on the face of it, what a idiotic thing to say. So <laughs> let's hear his argument. Let's talk about it. I assume like most of his works, it's going to be pretty anti-science and just anti-humanitarian. Uh, and, and we'll just see. We'll just see. You may have heard this already, by the way, but just in case you haven't, Living Waters, while they do already have a presence in the UK, they're planning what they're calling Operation London. You can imagine my reaction when I saw this being in London myself and having the feelings I do about Ray Comfort and Living Waters. They're planning to infiltrate the city for King Charles's coronation in May because it will be very busy. There will be tourists coming from all over the country, probably all over the world, to be there for, to see some of, or just be around while the coronation is happening. So they're going to do their thing where they hand out little, they've got these little weird souvenirs that's got King Charles on it. it they're very strange, they're very cringy, it's something that uh, Living Waters and Ray Comfort do quite a lot. They hand out these things that look like money, but then they've got a little gospel quote. It's mostly, it's not really about the gospel bit, it's mostly about the direction to the Living Waters website, because obviously that's where you can donate and uh, learn more. So they're planning on uh, infiltrating London with this nonsense uh, while, people are, while people are flooding the streets. Do not worry, I already have some countermeasures in mind, and I'm already actioning some plans, so don't fret, and stay tuned. I'm not just going to sit by and let that happen without some challenge, okay? Monkeypox and God, is it a gay disease? The description, is monkeypox a so-called gay disease? Is it a punishment from God for homosexual activity? Ray Comfort shows compelling clips and statistics regarding the monkeypox, and then shows evangelism conversations he had with two gay men. I am likely to skip those because his, um, his evangelizing on the street is always the same thing. It's always very disingenuous, but presented in this nicey, nicey way. And he tells people that they're horrible sinners, but in a nice, friendly way. And I absolutely loathe it. So I'm going to focus on his compelling clips and statistics on the monkeypox. Uh, for today, but you know, if you you're welcome to go and watch him preaching to gay men about how God is punishing them with monkeypox or what the fuck ever uh, on your own time, if you do so choose. Here we go. 
A global emergency declaration for monkeypox today puts this disease in the same category as COVID-19 and polio. It is the latest virus spreading across the United States and the exploding case count has doctors expressing serious concerns. In New York City, vaccine eligibility is limited. Only men who have sex with men or anyone with multiple or anonymous sex partners in the last two weeks can get the shot, according to the health department. An advisor to the doctor. That's because, so, I, I mean, obviously the reason that Living Waters are showing this on their channel is because it said, those who commit sin are the only ones that, yeah, we're pointing out they, people who have multiple sex partners, that's sinful, having sex before marriage, sex out of wedlock, and gay sex, that's all very sinful and bad. That's why they've put it on the screen. I just want to note that, and I'll put some links in the description, um... I can't remember off the top where exactly I read this, so I'll I'll put some information down below as always. Um, the reason that only those specific groups that are most strongly affected right now are being offered the vaccine is because we don't know how widespread it is and we don't know what the availability of the vaccine is, so they're only interested in targeting groups that are vulnerable right now. That's the reason for that. WHO telling the Associated Press the leading theory to explain the current spread of the disease appears to be transmission among gay and bisexual men at two raves held in Spain and Belgium. There's a big dilemma for the liberal media when it comes to this disease. That it's it's a dilemma for the liberal media. And he's showing like rat like I is CBS I'm an I'm English. So uh, these are all uh, as far as I can tell pretty much every news station he's showed is American. Are those particularly liberal stations? I don't know. You you tell me. I, I think I've only seen like BBC coverage of the monkeypox stuff. They've been pro-gay for years, but they can't... Also who? I don't, who is not a news organisation and not liberal. It's entirely separate. Some say this is not a gay disease because the homosexual community needs to be alerted that this is serious. If you look well, I mean, it's not a gay disease. I guess, I guess let's answer the title question here then. Is it a gay disease? No, because a disease can't be gay. <laughs> it's not a sexed disease that can have sexual attraction to other diseases of the same gender. It's, that's a hilarious and stupid way of putting it. Obviously, it's not a gay disease. So let, let's talk about this for a second. First of all, the, the phrase gay disease, as we've just discussed, means fuck all. That doesn't mean anything. Gay disease isn't a, isn't a thing. There's nothing different physiologically about a person who is gay that can be more susceptible to disease or something like that. There's nothing, as far as we're aware, there's nothing genetic about being gay that would make you more prone to certain diseases. The reason, and again I will leave some links down below, the reason that men who have sex with men in particular are more vulnerable to this disease right now is because of the communities, or most likely because of the communities that it spread in. If this was a disease that happened to spread most in care homes, we'd say that elderly people in care homes are the most at risk. Did you see what I'm saying? I will leave an article from Le Monde and from BBC UK uh, down below. These basically explain quite nicely and simply why this is the case. Um, does monkeypox spread faster among gay and bisexual men? This is BBC. The short answer is no, anyone can be infected by monkeypox. Monkeypox is a virus that is spread through skin-to-skin -skin contact. It can be spread by touching bedding, clothing, stuff like that, that has been touched by somebody who has monkeypox, and by coughs and sneezes with somebody who has the disease. Obviously, those things are not, those things are not exclusive to gay and bisexual men. Gay and bisexual men aren't particularly more sneezy, as far as I'm aware, than the rest of the world. Um, it's also important to note that in parts of Africa, it can be um, transmitted by certain animal bites, by um, being bitten and being around rodents. Um, if you eat uh, certain rodent meat that hasn't been cooked properly, things like that. So most people, uh, and again, this is this is from a UK perspective, most people in the UK are very unlikely to get it if they've not been in contact with somebody who already has it, and if they've not been recently in uh, West Africa, West or Central Africa. So monkeypox is just spread largely by being in close proximity and close contact with the person who has monkeypox. So it spreads inside a community quite quickly. 
That's why they've linked it to these raves. And it's not that the disease is intelligently targeting homosexual locations. Right? It's not specifically targeting gay raves. It's because somebody who had monkeypox entered that situation in which lots of people were in close proximity, in close contact. You sneeze on one person, they shake hands with somebody else, people hug, maybe they have an orgy, who knows, it doesn't matter. The point is that it's skin-to-skin -skin contact, sneezing, etc. So that is why gay and bisexual men are currently overrepresented in people who have monkeypox. That's the reason. In the BBC article, Dr. Prochaska mentions another possibility, which is that the proactive engagement of men with sexual health services might have led to more cases being diagnosed, i.e. men in that community are more likely to seek sexual health services, and therefore they're being more readily diagnosed. Because this disease is similar to and transmits in a similar way to other diseases like herpes and stuff like that, it's also easy to misdiagnose. So that's a potential reason. According to the Le Monde article, the scientific community is closely monitoring the possible evolution of the virus into a sexually transmitted infection. Studies conducted in Italy and Germany have shown the presence of the virus in the seminal fluid of some patients, although scientists have not established its infectious nature. Dr. DeVito added, these lesions are contagious and infectious. There have probably been mutations in the virus that have changed the transmission chains. It is therefore not out of the question that this virus becomes an STI. The important thing to note there is it's just a possibility that the scientific dis community is discussing. If it was a, a godly action, if this was the, the will of God, it would have started off as an STI that affects men who have sex with men, right? It wouldn't have to evolve because, you know, Living Waters doesn't like evolution anyway, so I don't know how they'll deal with that. Those are just the fundamentals of monkeypox that you need to understand. The reason that it's it's likely due to some super spreader events, this is a very highly contagious illness, um, it was brought into this community, and that's why it has spread more frequently there. Back to Ray. Look at the numbers. The overwhelming proportion of people who have been infected are men who have sex with men. According to the CDC, 99% of those who... Can I just say, and I've said this many times before, but I'm going to keep saying it until it stops happening one day. I loathe the use of dramatic, sad music in the background of these videos, especially for some reason it really permeates religious channels. Just like we're going to make this more dramatic and emotional and compel you. It's not, it's manipulative. It's just manipulative. Maybe it's just a way that living authors think to make their videos more engaging, but you don't need sad music in the background of your video if you have something compelling to say who've tested positive for monkeypox identify as men who have sex with other men. There's a lot of stigma and discrimination that, that surrounds many diseases. While, for example, we're seeing you know, um, some cases amongst men who have sex with men, this is not a gay disease. But at the same time, they don't want Christians saying homosexuality is a sin and pointing to Romans 127 as they did in the 1980s during the AIDS epidemic, which of Christians talking about AIDS and basically saying that it's a, it's a gay disease from God to punish them. According to the CDC, took the lives of 330,000 gay men just in the US. Yeah, and it, it devastated particular communities for a similar reason to monkeypox affecting certain communities. Because that's how diseases work. HBO aired a movie recently that documented what took place. They think it's this virus, AIDS. I don't know, they're just playing, I'm just going to skip ahead because they're, they're literally just playing the trailer for It's a Sin. Which is great, by the way, you should watch it. Good advertising, Living Waters. This experience was uh, one of the most painful things I've ever gone through in my life. I got some really cruel DMs and comments, messages from people. There were a few comments that referenced that maybe this was like God's punishment in some way to like gay men, uh, which kind of echoes some sentiment that we saw during the HIV epidemic. And... <laughs> goes straight into a picture of, of course, the King James Version of the Bible. Like, how can you... L I don't think... I, I think it's very unlikely that Ray Comfort, based on w what I assume... Okay, maybe not fairly. The assumptions I make about Ray Comfort, I think it's very unlikely that he edits Living Waters videos. I suspect they have video editors that do that, or, you know, production people. Um, How cruel... To include a clip of a young man talking about his experience having been 
harassed by people just like Living Waters and Ray Comfort. Having experienced homophobia in this way, and then putting that clip on your channel where exactly those people are going to congregate and see that and are more likely to drive hatred to that person and that community. This is then no shred of consideration for other human beings. At the very least, whether you believe that whatever, this is a punishment from God, you know, they need to be proselytized to, they, they need to be evangelized to, they, they need to have the word of God shared with them. Even if you believe that, you surely believe that people don't deserve harassment and abuse, and so you surely would not share that on your channel where you're likely to drive that. A, a man talking about the online abuse he faced, he faced in the wake of monkeypox in a video about how it is a gay disease, actually, and the people who DM'd you were right, so maybe more people are gonna, like, just fucking think. Have a little bit of compassion and, and fucking intelligence. This is the verse in the Book of Romans that's often quoted by Christians, saying not only that homosexuality is a sin, but pointing out the warning that it will result in disease. And I... Oh, well, we'll listen to the... the, the and in the Romans same way, first. also the men turned away from the natural function of the woman and were consumed with their desire towards one another, men right. with men committing shameful acts and in return receiving in their own bodies the inevitable and appropriate penalty for their wrongdoing. I am not going to go into this today because on my list of things to make this year, and I'm hoping it'll be quite soon, because I have a lot to say, but it's going to be a big one that requires a lot of prep. I'm going to do a video on what the Bible actually says about being gay, what it means, etc. So I'm not going to deal with that today, just look out for that in future, because I am obviously very invested in this particular topic. And uh, in that, I'm definitely going to talk a little bit about the things that the Bible references much more often, the you know, say things in the Old Testament that today we consider highly unethical and, and disgusting and somebody like Ray Comfort Living Waters would uh, not publicly advocate for because they know that there would be backlash. So I'm not going to bother with that today. Let's just say that that's a garbage excuse, genuinely using Romans as an excuse for being homophobic is absurd. And let's talk about, let's talk about the, the gay disease thing one more time. Because here's the thing, disease is already a thing. There's all kinds of diseases out there. Not to scare you, especially in the wake of a global pandemic. Do continue going outside and getting fresh air. I know it's very hard and scary, but there are all kinds of diseases out there, right? We've had all sorts of similar viruses to monkeypox. We've had very different things. Some diseases affect some communities more than others. Whether that's something that is related to genetics, whether it's related to lifestyle, whether it's because uh, a disease is a certain level of contagious and it's entered via a specific community, as in the case of monkeypox, some diseases affect the elderly more than the young, and vice versa. Is that God hating the elderly? Some diseases affect males more than females, and vice versa. Is that God hating one of those groups and saying that it's a sin? Is prostate cancer God's way of saying being a man is a sin? <laughs> is throat cancer saying talking is a sin? What about diseases that very specific people are genetically predisposed to? I have a family history of eyesight problems. Is that a punishment for some something specific to do with my genetic line and my family? Is it the, the sin of being a coal miner that has passed down through the genetics to me. Do you see what I'm saying? This could, this could go into absurdity, right? I mean, it already it begins with absurdity. The fact that, like we've talked about, this is, this is largely due to the way this is spread, but even if, even if it was a disease that largely affected gay people for some genetic reason, okay? Let's, let's say that it, say that it was an STI that is transmitted exclusively between men who have sex with men. I don't, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> because what about all the diseases that affect other specific groups? Why is that not a sin? Why is it not a sin to be elderly? Is heart disease God's way of punishing the elderly for, for getting old? 
this could go this could go on ad infinitum right because it's absurd it doesn't matter the only reason it matters that communities in Europe I don't know about outside of Europe it sounds like it's the same in the USA at least from these articles I'm I'm only familiar with the situation and the bit of the world that I live in very sorry about that but it sounds like at least in these places in Europe there have been these potentially super spreader events or at least the monkeypox has been spread via specific communities so what the only purpose for the, the, there are two purposes for knowing that this spreads around those communities communities particularly of men who have sex with men one is so that people can take appropriate preventative measures so that people can get seen by the doctor so they can be aware of this and the second is so that scientists can study it in case there is some sort of link there that we don't yet understand in case the virus has evolved in some way and that might help that otherwise who the fuck cares? If Ray Comfort, in all his idiocy, can't think outside the box, can't look outside his narrow view at all other diseases and see that actually this approach is kind of ridiculous, if he genuinely thinks that this is a punishment from God, as people have claimed about everything, gay people have been responsible for fucking tsunamis, people like Ray and like Living Waters will find any excuse to blame gay people for anything, even in the case when as far as he's concerned, it's only affecting the gay community, then then, it, then that's God. Uh, who are you to intervene with God's will, Ray? Like, surely, surely taking a step back and saying nothing is the righteous thing to do because this is God's will. No? There is no way anyone can call themselves Christian and yet hate gay people. Look at the verse that follows 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. None of us can point a holier than thou finger at anyone. We should instead show that we love homosexuals by reaching out with the gospel. And there's a way. <sighs> at least that is something. The, the old. We're all sinners. It's just you have a sin that I find so particularly egregious for some reason that I have to make multiple videos about it, that it's an important part of my doctrine and my life and our church, that we practice conversion therapy in our church. If we're all sinners, if this is all the case, if everything in the Old Testament... I don't know why I took my glasses off. I just got incensed and removed them. Now I can't really see. <laughs> I just... um First video of the year. Blame that. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's Ray Comfort. He's getting to me. If all, all, all sin is sin, right? All sin is... Well, I don't know whether Ray thinks all sin is equal. This is disputed among people in churches. But we're, we're all sinners, right? We're all equally damned. So why specifically the need to target homosexuals? The only answer is hatred. They have a particular hatred for homosexuals. They want to use as much as possible, like disease in the news. This is a great opportunity to talk about homosexuals and how the Bible says that's wrong. Well, yes, but you've just said that we're all sinners. So we could be targeting everyone for everything. And okay, to raise credit, he kind of does that. He does go out on the street and is like, I bet you're a thief. Have you ever stolen anything? I bet you have. So you're a liar and a thief. And therefore you're going to hell. To, to his credit, he does do that. But for some reason, for, for some reason, this church, like many others, is obsessed with the sexual lives of other people. It's obsessed with people's sexual orientation because it's so easy to have an enemy if you, if you other them. It, it, makes, it makes their mission as the prosecuted Christians so much easier if they have an enemy, and it's easier to maintain an enemy if you other them, okay? Especially if they are clearly suffering as a result of their actions. They're getting these diseases. We just want to help them. We want to help save their eternal souls and protect them from these terrible illnesses. I find this to be very disingenuous, very disingenuous, very self-serving, self-centered. It's this idea that they have all the answers. They know everything because the Bible says everything you need to know. It doesn't, but okay. And guaranteed, day to day, they are committing sins per the laws of the Bible. That's, that's just, yeah. 
in, in in that sense, if you want to call everyone a sinner, everyone is a sinner. So maybe shut the fuck up and focus on your own sin. Worry about your own fucking life. But it's it's a it's a good talking point, and it's an opportunity to target people under the guise of love. I think that's what I hate the most about Ray is that he is this like, oh, I'm so nice, I'm so caring, I just love you. Either he's just a liar and gross and horrible and attention-seeking, or he has genuinely deceived himself into thinking that this is loving, in that going out onto the street and making people cry and talking about how they're evil sinners and making up just the, the worst the worst apologetics that any famous apologist i think has ever <laughs> has ever produced i think he's actually deceived himself possibly unless he is liar manipulator evil horrible he could be both he could be a mix of both um i think it's quite likely that he has at this point in his life after doing it for this many years i think he probably has deceived himself into thinking he is righteous and holy and and loving and good which is tragic to the nth degree way to do this lovingly and without compromise, as you'll see from these two witnessing clips as I share the gospel with a couple of very likeable homosexuals. A couple of very likeable homosexuals. To be described this way by Ray Comfort is a dream. <laughs> I hope one day... thing is, they always talk about homosexuals. Like I say, I don't want to watch his street preaching. It's going to be ten minutes of bullying two gay men, but in a nicey-nicey way. And I'm not interested. I, I do love... I love that he's describing them as very likeable homosexuals. It's the implied but. It's like they're homosexual, but they're actually really nice. Can you believe it? Isn't that wonderful? We can all be nice to each other, even though I believe they're committing terrible sin and they're going to burn in hell forever. And when they do, I'll be happy because it's the law's decision. I'll smile on them down in hell and burning and be like, oh, they, if they'd have listened to me, they'd have been living forever in the Lord's love because I have all the answers and uh, they're stupid sinners. Fucking Ray Comfort. Um, yeah, so I would love to be described. I, I, they are very specifically anti-homosexual. Very rarely do they talk about, or I don't think I've ever heard a Christian apologist, at least a, a well-known Christian apologist, refer to bisexuals ever. But I would love to be known <laughs> by like a similar moniker. She's a, she's quite a likable. Actually, I don't know if you would call me likable, because I can be a bit spicy. I don't think Ray Comfort will ever call me a likeable bisexual, and that makes me very upset, actually. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Monkeypox is not a gay disease. To, again, to give a little bit of credit that they so don't deserve, but for the sake of being, being objective, uh, Living Waters don't say, yes, it's a gay disease. They just pose the question um, and then refer to the passage in the Bible which says people who engage in gay sex, basically, <laughs> if you have gay sex, you will get diseases. Um, and that's what they're inferring. But paired with that, they do say, you can't hate gay people because we're all sinners. So that's nice. That's good. I am grateful for that being in there. I do think it was very cruel to include that interview from the guy talking about how much ab online abuse he got after having contracted monkeypox, just to include that in a video where at least it didn't say his name, I don't think, um, where he might get targeted by the same hatred by the same people. Duh. Like, I think that was either stupid or quite callous. But but at least they had this overall nicey-nicey view. That they, I don't even know. So, sometimes I think that's worse. Like, uh, like it, it does make it so much easier to listen to their doctrine if they present it in a nice, compassionate way. It makes it easier to digest, and that is that is a great entry point into this kind of fundamentalism. Which worries me too. It's that whole love the sinner, hate the sin thing. And it's just not loving. I feel like I'm developing an Australian accent. It's just not loving a New Zealand accent. My apologies. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get told off for that one. I'm so sorry. And I know at least a few of you are in New Zealand, so I apologize on your behalf. I apologize for Ray. At least America's got him now. I apologize for mixing you up with Australia briefly. At least I remembered. Ugh. Oh, Cancelled. Yeah, I just I just feel very despairing at Living Waters and this, you know, love the sin, hate the sinner thing, because it's just it's not loving to believe that someone is going to hell for how they were born, for who they love. The idea that your all-loving God that we ought to bow down and worship and we have to follow all of his rules and do everything he said because he loves us so much, 
the the idea that this all loving creator decreed that some people were going to be born a certain way and the only way to have eternal salvation and live with him forever is to never be romantically involved with a person that they could fall in love with that is so fucking cruel that is the epitome of cruelty how could you believe that from an all-loving creator there are very specific reasons or at least there are a slew of potential reasons for those passages in romans which as i say I intend to do a full big video on, so I won't get into all that today. But people in the modern day still using that as an excuse to be homophobic is just absurd. And while, yes, the Living Waters video didn't explicitly say this is a gay disease, they did phrase the question, they whacked a load of stuff on the screen, and included some Bible passages which all tied together basically say, yes, it is a gay disease, it's a punishment from God. They've managed to heavily imply it, without outright saying it, which is kind of the Living Waters whole thing. I hate it. I hate it. And I'm upset that they have a presence in the UK. I'm upset that they're planning to come to London and spread their nonsense, and I shall definitely be fighting that with everything I've got. And yeah, it's not a gay disease. Obviously it's not a gay disease. And if it was, who cares? God is responsible for giving people horrible diseases? Then God sucks, and uh, he shouldn't do that, because it's not very nice. Mystery solved. <laughs> Mystery over. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Do please leave your thoughts down below. If you haven't subscribed, do consider subscribing. Maybe send some videos or the channel to a friend. Maybe share it around. Maybe check out some of my other content. Do some little things that might help out. I had an amazing year last year. We had some awesome growth. It has all slowed down to a more gentle crawl now, and I would love for us to pick up the pace and hit hard at some people who deserve it try and share some more good causes we raised a lot of money for some amazing causes last year so let's uh let's try and build up some momentum get some more awesome stuff going we're doing more cool things over on patreon this year i'm very excited about that and with that i would like to give a big shout out to my giant chickens and my colossal quackers over on patreon <laughs> Thank you so, so much for all your support. Even just watching this video helps so much. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and I will see you very soon. Bye.